Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of our movie commentaries. Today we're going for Reservoir Dogs. A cult classic, I believe. I'd say so too. Now, I think it's Tarantino's first proper movie that yes, he ever it, released. it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And 1992, the year I was born. Oh, lucky you. Then they should be good. So a landmark year for cinema and the world. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> quite say that. If I'm going to overstate it a little bit. <laughs> but um, I've heard good things. Uh, I'm more a fan of his late work. Uh, yes and no. Okay. His last abysmal film would have been The Hateful Eight. I that enjoyed The what? Hateful Eight. Really? I actually the first really enjoyed... 30 minutes was just horses running through the snow. I really enjoyed The Hateful no, Eight. No, I'm sorry. I can't, I'm not with you there. I'm um, sorry. I like that. And I love Inglorious. Yes, obviously. Inglorious. Pulp Fiction. I've not seen Pulp no. Fiction. Pulp Fiction. And I like um, Django. Yes, Django. Those are his three best ones, in my opinion. Kill Bill. Trash. Never seen it. Trash. To be honest, I'm not too um, familiar with his early stuff. I just know his later work, really. Oh, okay. Uh, but I've oh, never seen... Oh, there was the latest one, the Hollywood one. Hollywood one. I've not I've seen got... that no, one yet. No, I've seen it either, yes. But, but I'm looking to forward it. to it. I've heard it's not great. Really? Yes, that's oh, been I've heard some general, good things. general feedback. It's been it's uh, a bit dull. Well, that would be a shame. But to be honest, I think I'd probably end up enjoying it anyway. Well, but the if... amount of times we've ended up enjoying a film we shouldn't. Yeah, but you enjoyed The Hateful Eight. So I did know? enjoy The Hateful Eight. Oh, I can't get on board with that. Uh, oh. But Reservoir Dogs, um, I haven't seen it. Have you? No. And I've heard... heard Decent things. I've heard, I've heard decent things. I've heard it's, it's, it's like a gangster film, is it? Like I think a, so. Yeah. But and I'm we a big fan of fun. Uh, gangster films. We'll have fun. That That's what we'll do. Great fun. Yes. Great fun watching movies with friends. Well. So, <laughs> speaking of watching movies with friends, you are now our friends, and you'll be watching this movie with us too. That's an excellent segue, I thought. Good. I like it. So, the way this works, obviously we can't play the movie for you. We can't do it. We can't just say, here we go, watch this, get on with it. Um, that's up to you to find. So you find it. it we've got it on Netflix at the moment. So yep. you know that it's on Netflix. Some of you may have it on DVD or any other or form. Or any other streaming service. Yep. Uh, so get the movie ready to play on your laptop, tablet, phone, TV, any of the above. I just like how the TV comes last now. It's just an afterthought. <laughs> Whichever way you want to watch it is more than fine by us. So get it all loaded up, ready to watch. Uh, We'll count you down into press and play. You press play at the moment, we tell you to, and then you'll be watching the movie alongside us. You will have our commentary over the top of it, Yep. and it will enhance your viewing experience tenfold. What we will do is we'll take the movie from a solid 8 to a solid 10, 11, 20 out of 10, if that's possible. To the stars, basically. Yes. This will be one of the greatest things you ever do. If I say so myself. Yeah. So, you should have it all lined up, ready to go. Same thing I always say before we watch these. Please remember to like, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment letting us know what you thought of the movie. Uh, Any suggestions for movies you'd like us to do movie commentaries of. We are always open to those ideas. And um, it's just one of those things that lets us know we're on track. Yes. Let's us know that you appreciate what we're doing, that you enjoy it. Because that's why we do this. We do this so that you can enjoy it. Right, I think I've waffled on long enough there. Yes, I've been nodding for the last five minutes. Come on. Yes, yeah, all right. It's <laughs> lasted five. You need to chill. So, got it all lined up, ready to go. Going to count you down in three, two, one, and play. Excellent. So we're on our way. So I live you, American I think you should, corporate should change play to lift off next time. Lift off. All right. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> What, what does it say? A Lawrence Bender Association. Yeah, I don't know who that is, though. No, but the word Bender just makes me giggle. Oh, it's straight in! They really went for it. It's artistic. I recognise that guy across the thing. Mm. The one in the that's air. Steve... Oh, yeah, that's yes, Steve Buscemi. There he is. He always plays the same sort of character, though. He does. Now, like most Tarantino movies... That's Tarantino there. Oh! It's not the first time he's played in his own film, though. He no, no, he Django. does show up, yeah. But with a Tarantino movie, it's going to be all about the dialogue, really, isn't it? I hope so. But I also expect some action. Yeah, I expect some tense scenes, some well-done stuff. So, I think they're going to be planning some sort of job, a hit, a heist. 
Oh, I know this guy as well. Yeah, there's a lot of recognisable faces in there. So this is a bit of a Tarantino trait where they just have a random conversation about yeah. things that don't really matter. I always feel like, am I supposed to listen to these and like follow it along or not? Like, I don't know. Is it important to the film? Is it not? I know. Sometimes it's just superfluous. Yeah. Like, it plays no real role. Yeah, I know. Nice word. Yeah, I know. But Tarantino's really driving this in. This is his own movie as well. No. I've got to believe that he doesn't last too long in this movie. Um, Possibly. He might get taken out fairly quickly. Because he's never really spent that much time. No, he doesn't focus on himself, does he? Well, in this one he has. Yeah. He's coming back to him. More than he ever normally does. But it was his first film, so maybe he was just feeling a bit egotistical. Yeah. Maybe he was like, hey guys, look at me. Um, How did you get all these actors to play in this film? They're quite some... I recognise most of these guys mm. around the table. He must have... Because um, for his debut one, yeah, obviously his club. latest one, he's got like Brad Pitt yeah. and all those guys, but... Maybe they just liked the script so much that they were like, right, let's get involved. Mm, maybe. I mean, none of these guys are massive names, but they're all people who've played in a lot of films. They've yeah. had roles here and well there. Well-known actors. Yeah. Good actors. I, actors you know by face, but not, ne- by, but not necessarily yeah. by Apart name. Apart from Steve Buscemi. Yeah, true. But yes, this guy in particular with the toothpick. Yeah, he's been in a lot of like Italian sort of. I just gangster really films. recognize him, but I can't pin exactly Basically, where I know yeah, him that's, from. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And the guy next to him on on his left, our right. He I, looks I like a pound too. shop Ryan Gosling. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, he, doesn't. he looks like a pound shop. Um... You're going to say oh. Tom Hiddleston or someone? No. Who was I going to say? I lost my train of thought now. Oh, apologies. Hmm. I can see his face, but I can't remember his name. I also recognise this guy in the 80s jacket. Mm, although I don't think he really does anything nowadays. He always plays the sort of fat Italian loser. Well, someone has to. Well, of course. I'll be honest, though. This conversation is boring the pants off me. I think we're not really getting too into it anyway. We're not really paying too much attention. No, we're trying to work out all the actors first. That guy over there as well. I recognise him too. To the left yeah. of Quentin. I think he looks like a guy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but I might be wrong. No, Not one of the main ones, like a part-time I character like who shows up like once a season. Brooklyn the Nine-Nine. Vulture. Do you know the Vulture in Brooklyn Nine-Nine? No, I don't follow it that closely. I only watch it for Terry Crews. Oh, we all love Terry Crews. Greatest man ever. Right, is this conversation coming to an end? Yeah, yeah. they're Come basically on. talking about leaving a tip for the waitress. Oh, something we may have forgotten <laughs> we, to we do ne- we earlier have today. Uh-huh. <laughs> to be fair, we had like three different wait- people waiting on us. Like, who do I tip? I feel bad. I feel bad, like, but I, I had no cash. I had no cash. You had one full 20. I'm not going to leave £20 no. for a £20 meal. £28. Yeah, well, Ooh, since we split it, we split 14 it. And then I got your tea later. Right, okay. If this was us in this restaurant here, you'd be paying nothing, essentially. I split the <laughs> bill with you. And don't pretend there's not been times where I haven't paid for the tea and coffee. Uh, I can't remember the last time that I got a coffee from you. Maybe like a half-eaten biscuit at best. <laughs> and I always provide you with donuts when you come around my that, house. Okay, you know what? I'll give you that. You do reluctantly give me one donut. Always give you refreshments. Oh, tap water. Wow. Really pushing the boat out there. <laughs> it started off bottled water. That ain't true. True. Right. We have completely lost track of this here. <laughs> See? They're talking about the waitress thing. Yeah. See, he's... He's on the side of... like you. He's a douchebag like no. you who doesn't believe in tipping. It's not that I don't believe in tipping. I don't believe in tipping for the sake of tipping. Oh, no. He's so you. He's so you. <laughs> Playing the smallest violin. And I'm this guy. See? Exactly. You know, I'm on this guy's side. Right. Yeah. There is discrepancy about who I gets tipped and who doesn't. I get that. 
But McDonald's is sort of in in out. You don't have the customer service experience as much as you do with a waitress Not who's really. with you for the duration of the no, meal. No, we didn't. We had three different ones. All right, I'll grant you that. My taxi driver took me to the airport. Very nice bloke. I didn't tip him. I just paid him his his. Fare you never tip left. a taxi driver. I tip taxi drivers. You know, keep the change. But he came to a full round twenty. Oh well, that was his mistake then. Well, it was a flat fee from the hotel to the um, airport. It's just twenty. I think this whole movie commentary will be us debating the merits of. He literally just flicked like gum at him or something. Oh, that's not friendly. Hey, ramblers again. Let's get so. Rambling. Is he the leader of this then? I don't know who he is. So he's called Mr. Pink. Yeah, I, I'm. This film is well known because they've all got names of colours. Oh, so like Mr. Pink, Mr. Brown, Mr. Blue, I Mr. Red. I believe so. Yes. All right. Huh. Yeah. See, I believe in that. What? He was like, I don't care what you believe, just give me the money for the tip. <laughs> I recognise this voice. You Is know this what? Ray Liotta? I'm not sure. Uh, here's the famous tune. I know this tune. Yeah. And there's the... I do know about this scene where they all walk in slow motion with the sunglasses and suits. It's like Baywatch, but less sexy. Hmm. Now, I know we didn't pay perfect... It's, oh, Harvey Keitel, that's his name. Oh, they're going to give us the names pay... now? Yeah. I like. I know this guy. Yeah, Madsen, I recognise. He's played in some of that. Chris Penn, really? Mm. I know him. See? I know all their faces. Don't know... Yeah. Apart from we know Steve, Steve Buscemi. I mean, he's really one of the most recognisable faces. Never seen this guy. I sort but, of recognise um, him as well, a little bit. Mm. How integral do you reckon that opening scene was uh not very i know it's like character establishing tim roth he's a well-known director i think oh no his brother is eli roth who's the director and tim roth's the actor am mm. i getting that right i don't know i didn't know he had a brother because i think eli roth was the bear jew in inglorious oh yeah but boss Kimmy didn't play in that film what boss is it um What's his Roth didn't play in that film though? No, it's the other. It's his brother Eli Roth. Well, he's younger though. Yeah, I think so. A lot younger. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, how can he be? Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm still trying to think of a guy who looks like Roth. Okay. I, I can picture his face, but I can't remember his name. He plays in The Rock with. Um, I've never seen it. With Sean Connery. I've never seen it. He's not a very good actor. He just plays himself all the time. Oh, oh, Nicholas Cage is yes, in The Rock. that's the one. No. I'm Roth, not seeing Nick Cage. No. Roth looks like a, a poor man's version of Nicholas Cage. No, yes, I'm not he seeing does. that. He does. I preferred my one. No. Oh. oh, damn. Speaking of Roth. Wow, we've got shot already. I think he's going to bleed out. Possibly. There's a lot of blood there. I think he is. He, he might be. I think he's been shot well. in the belly, yeah. I know it too. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcasm in the middle of a medical situation. Yeah, I guess you need a sense of humour. <laughs> I hope they explain what happened to her. I think they'll like break it all down in a second. But they're clearly on a getaway journey. Yeah, it'd be weird if they're going somewhere. <laughs> they're going to break that guy's arm in a second. I think that would be the least of his worries. Did they go to the hospital? Or to like a backstreet doctor? Yeah, they can't go to the hospital. Very well dressed as well. Mm, very well dressed. 
He's not okay. No, he's still not. <laughs> so this will be their safe house. More like a safe shed. What's that about having a baby? <laughs> uh, hurts like having a baby? Worse than uh, having a baby? I don't know. I want to see my baby. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice way to reassure. <laughs> You're a tough guy. <laughs> I think he does die, actually. Yeah, maybe he will. He's not looking in good shape. No. Also, we can see his stomach, and he doesn't look like he's been shot. <laughs> Oh, he's taking down his trousers. I don't think now is the appropriate time to make a move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pick, pick your uh, pick your t- a moment carefully. Yeah, this is not looking good for him. So he's the guy who stitches him up, this guy who's coming, Joe. I'm guessing it's their sort of backstreet doctor guy, yeah? Yeah. Go to med- medical guy. God, that guy's in a tough spot. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know what? I don't blame him for being scared. Well, no, obviously not. He's on the verge of death. <laughs> it's funny how he's turned into a bit of a bit of a child here. I just wants him to hold him and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I can't say I've ever been in that situation, but... No, I've never been shot. At least not with a real gun. No, just just water pistols. Yeah, paintball guns. He's doing his hair. I, I think that guy's so doomed. I think he's gonna. <laughs> I'm not sure he'll be fine. I get that he's trying to reassure him, but well, it'd be weird if he went in for like a kiss right now. But still, if this is his last chance, <laughs> now, now is the time. <laughs> Just for a minute. <laughs> Surely he'd be better off if he wasn't forcing himself to talk all the time. Just rest a bit. I think we need some dialogue here, that's why. Yeah. (laughs) Mm, I think he would. Oh, they can't take that risk anyway. Yeah. It puts them all at risk. <laughs> I don't think so. Come on, Nicholas Cage. I expect more from you. He's not Nick Cage. It is. No. He's more like Nicholas Cage than what you said. I still see what I was saying, but oh well. We'll agree to disagree. I'll agree that you're wrong. <laughs> oh. Ah, it's the man Tarantino's doesn't like... back. No, it's not. It's oh no, it's Kaskemi. I can tell from behind, could I? I could. I immediately knew who he was. All oh, right. Oh, what? Well, another one of the dead. So Brown's dead. I think that was Tarantino. I mean, it might, it might make sense. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't need the tip. Yeah. Wait, he's actually come out of it all right compared to the others. <laughs> True. But he had principles. Yeah, well, your idea of <laughs> principles... That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. So I think they were robbing a yeah, bank. They were all doing something. 
One one of them's dead. One of them's on the floor dying. Yeah. Is this going to be one of those where he goes back from the floor showing us what happened? I think the whole thing's going to be in this room. Like the Hateful Eight was all in the cabin. Oh, dear God. Oh, I feel like the guy on the floor now. Oh, you'll be all right. Oh. As long as the plot's good and there are nice like twists and turns, we'll, well be fine. Well, the Hateful Eight did not fill me with... The thing with the Hateful Eight, right? Oh, here we go. No, no, no. While this guy's dying on the floor, we'll have this discussion. The Hateful Eight, the first half hour, is pointless. That can go immediately. No, you don't need it. I don't know. Secondly, the long, boring conversations with Samuel L. Jackson trying to, trying to explain everything mm. in the thing cabin, that could also be cut down. Some of that could be cut I off. I liked that. The only cool bit was when uh, that lady's brother, or whatever, Channing his, Tatum, got his head blown off straight into her face. Oh, yeah. And the brains went around. That was cool. I still can't believe you haven't watched Pulp Fiction. I just never that got into it. That is a good now, film that's to watch. weird. Doesn't that, like, all the start, middle, and end are all jumbled up and stuff? Um, not really, no. Oh, okay. I thought it was like that. There's a bit in the dungeon that you will definitely enjoy. Oh, a dungeon? Yes. I can't believe you've seen it. No, it's got the classic cheeseburger we'll, uh, conversation. We'll watch it one day. Yeah, it is a good film. So Steve Buscemi seems quite twitchy here. Steve Buscemi looks twitchy on a good day. No, but I mean the way he's talking. <laughs> That's oh, he's how he always really talks. Out. He's smashing stuff. <laughs> he's just like, are you cool? It's like, no, he's very clearly not cool right now. Did the other guy die then? Is that why they left him on the floor? No. They've just sort of like moved away from him for a bit. Let him let him calm down. Yeah. There's only so much melodrama about dying they can take. See, quick check on him. Still alive? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Just leave him there. Yeah. But I'd like to see who sort of like survived and who shows up, you know. This is the one problem I have with um, Tarantino films. What? He does tend to drag out a lot of the scenes. He does. He relies heavily on dialogue, and sometimes the dialogue really lives up to it. it yeah, it's fine, but it, it drags them out. Like this whole scene here, backwards and forwards, but come on. I think it. he does it to Get add it. realism. I'm not looking for realism. No one goes to the cinema for realism. Some people do. If we wanted realism, I don't think the uh, Marvel films would be so popular. Realism is not what people are looking for. Well, different strokes, different folks. My strokes. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. So, I think they feel like they've been betrayed. Yeah. They so there's feel a like traitor someone's... in their midst. Someone's um, done them in. Someone shot them. Well, that's what they think. So he's saying the cops were already there ready for them because he knew what was going on. Yeah. So they're a group of thieves and none of them know each other's real names. Yeah. So who came up with the idea of let's call each other? Well, How did I they get together the in the first place? I think the big bold guy brought them all together as a group. And then told them to... Just... Stick with coloured names. Yeah. So it's like best that they don't know each other's names, can't shop each other out. And they've done a few jobs, I'm assuming. And it's best for building... Oh, here we go. There's the flashback. So he's running away. There's three popos after him. The feds. Yep. Oh, I heard a Wilhelm scream in the background. Heard a what? Wilhelm scream. That's like the famous movie scream. Oh, right. I like how he's just literally running into people. Yeah. How have the police not caught up with him? Is he... <laughs> Oof. Oh, that would have hurt. That would have hurt more than that. It just got up as if it was... Get the hell out of the car. Why is he cool. still in the car with a cracked windshield? And this is taking oh. way more time. 
Literally just emptied oh, a whole... Oh, he shot a police officer. Literally emptied a whole magazine. How many bullets does he have? <laughs> Enough. Did he leave the briefcase? Did he? There'd be jokes if he did. No, I think he took it. No, it's not... The... Yeah, I don't see it on the floor. How can you drive with that crack wound screen? I know. Do they wear these suits all the time? So they've both killed cops. Yeah, the cop killers now. That they do shame. look like they're dressed for a funeral, don't they? Their funeral. Oh, oh very good. <laughs> I want to know who this Mr. Blonde is. The main guy? Well, who is the main guy? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> he keeps combing his hair. Yeah. He combed the other guy dead. Get, yeah. Dead guy's Doesn't hair. matter that he's got blood all over him. No, no, no. He'll comb the hair. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got to bring a bit of dignity to his crimes. He doesn't have a lot of hair to comb anyway. No. So they've killed a young girl. I have to say, if this is all going to be in one room, I am disappointed. Oh, I'll be fine. Technically, they're in the second room now. Oh. Because the main sort of yes. entrance. Now there's the bathroom. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's going to be dialogue heavy with flashbacks. Trying to get his zipper lighter to work then. And I think there's going to be a lot of smoking as well. Probably. Many c cigarettes is going to get smoked, yeah. Oh, so they stole some diamonds. So I think that makes the whole job worth it. Couple well, of if they get away with it, yes. If not, then pointless. Thing is, the more of them that die on the job, the more each one gets in the split. Well, that's probably why one of them betrayed them. To get a bigger yeah. slice. One of, of them pie. might be like an undercover police. Mm. And he's the one who shot them out, and they've got to try and work out who it is. Yeah, but then it's not a betrayal, it's just that guy was undercover. That guy was never a friend to betray them. Yeah. See, he's got a good point here, Steve Buscemi, where he's there like, look, there's clearly a rat, there's an undercover guy, so the plan's out the window, let's just leave with our share. Hmm. Well, it depends how many of the others are dead. Hmm? How many of the others have died? We know one They're definitely not sure. has. The guy on the floor outside might die. Yeah, he looks pretty doomed. So that's two gone. One of them is a rat. So how many actually leaves them left? How many were there? With eight? No. Maybe. Yeah, I think there was about eight. I don't think the big fat old guy was part of the... I think he was the mastermind. And yeah, then he takes think... a cut at yeah, the Yeah, I don't think he actually does not He doesn't look like he can run anywhere. No. So really, there's just seven of them. Who cares about that guy? Yeah. Two of them are dead. That's down to five. Two of them are here. So there might be three others they need to think about. Well, they'll start showing up. Yeah. When they start accusing each other of being rats, that's when it all falls, falls to apart. pieces. Yeah. Always happens. Yeah, I think somebody is. 
So basically, they need to work out who ratted them out. Yeah, pretty much. And then what are they going to do after that? Kill them. And then make off with all the cash. Mm. It just seems like a plan. Oh, where's this? <coughs> Bless you. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I do think this is a bit where he's being informed of the whole plan. And he's working out exactly what's sort of going on. So, Mr. White, who's this guy? Is he? Oh, right, okay. But a bus coming to, um, caught him, Mr. White, earlier. Oh, did he? Well, it's still, it's told us that's Mr. White now. So these two are the ones who put the, the crew together? Yeah, it looks like it. Or he's the chief guy on the job, and the... He's the fence. Yeah. Not the fence, just the guy who masterminds it. So he gets them to rob the diamonds, and he knows where to move them on. Uh, no, because he asked him who can move the ice. I don't think he's, he knows how to move it. A oh, bald guy okay. knows how to move it. He's just a thief. Like a pro thief. Mm. I'd be surprised if he was part of the job, though. Yeah, no, he's not part of the job. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Damn. Well, tell us. She calls him Papa because he's like Papa Joe, I guess. Yeah. Like that's dead. Let's see, is he dead? No, he's still still just alive. So it's one of those where he'll sort of like half stay alive the whole way through, I think. It's a good thing. See, he wants to take him to the hospital. But Steve Buscemi does not want to take the risk. No. Which I can understand. As well, harsh as he understand him, but with the tipping, you were against him. Yeah, but there's a difference between being a douchebag in a restaurant and... Being a douchebag with a guy just dying on the floor? <laughs> well, with the consequence of not of tipping is nothing on him. He loses a couple of bucks. The consequence of taking him to a hospital could see him in jail for life. But if you have a few... Bucks. Well, at least a few bucks is all you've got, then you can't take Oh, he's getting a serious face on here. I think I'm saying he's going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are silly. This story needs to move faster, Quentin. Come on. <laughs> You're not a fan of this. I'm, so I'm not a fan when he stretches scenes unnecessarily. I would like the others to show up. Because every time I watch one of his films, Inglorious Bastards moves at a good pace. It does. Pulp There's a lot of characters which he has to move around yeah. in that in different locations. Pulp fiction, that also moves on quite nicely. I and also comment. you've got a lot, lot, lots of different things, lots of storylines going on mm. at the same time. Yeah. Right? That works. Kill Bill is just the same woman doing the same thing throughout the whole film. Is it just fight scene after fight scene? Yeah, but it's like rubbish fight scene after rubbish fight scene. Oh, really? They're not, They're not good? No, it's too much slashy slashy and like taking out a hundred people at the same time. Like, oh. it's just is it insane. over the top? Yeah, to the point where it's just silly. Oh, okay. Yeah. A bit like the Matrix movies became. Yes. Yes. Not that I've seen any, but yes. <laughs> um, and then The Hateful Day, similar to this, all in one room, dialogue. A lot of Stretched, unnecessary stretched out dialogue. That film could get wrapped up in an hour and a half, easy. But he turned into a three hour slog. Yeah. Alright, I sort of see what you see what I mean. I, I like his stories. I like the, the stuff he does. He just could condense it down so much quicker. I think he is a bit, um... What's the word? Even Django, to a point. In fairness, I rewatched Django literally about three days ago. Yeah. And, um, you know what? Every scene makes sense and flows properly. 
The bit I didn't like of Django was, you know where, um, actually funny, where he's, his cameo. That cameo oh. scene is unnecessary. I feel. No, that the makes whole... sense, where he tricks them into giving him his gun and all yeah. that. that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah I, li- I like it, but I just think the whole thing was probably unnecessary. You cut that down. And then you've got the big gun shootout at the right end. Which, which doesn't last long. No. When you watch it back, yeah, it actually isn't long. But yeah, Django is good. Things move along at a nice pace. Django is very good. Yeah. Inglorious. I think Inglorious is possibly his best. I think it is. I think from a movie perspective, it's great. Mm. The story is great. The acting is Again, I watched that three, four days ago, and that was... I'd forgotten how good it was. And I think the acting helps massively. Yeah. Brad Pitt's always a win, really. And what's his face? The Austrian guy that I love. Uh, Christoph Waltz. Yes, he's great. Yeah. He's very, very good. And I think that part. Yeah, he did two part. Tarantino movies and won two Oscars. Yeah. So I fair enough to him. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, they've had a bit of a disagreement here. Yeah, again, what you're saying makes sense. I think that what a lot of what Steve said does make sense. Yeah. He's literally just, his whole mentality is clearly just covering his own back. Well, yeah, self-preservation at this point. Yeah. Oh, who's this watching? Oh, no. Oh, that's Mr. Blonde. That's Blonde? Yeah. Where's Brunette? Ironic, I guess. Mm. So, so he's... he's I think he's the one who they said went crazy and started shooting the place up. I don't know. He's looking shady. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they're getting very fed up at this point. So am I. <laughs> but he turned up here. Like, if he was guilty, he wouldn't turn up here, would he? No, I think he's following with the plan. He's coming in trying to command the situation. <laughs> he says while screaming and pointing a gun. Why does he just shoot him? <laughs> he's forgetting conveniently that he started the robbery yeah so he's basically just going oh well they set off the alarm so they deserve to die which is a bit harsh but in some ways he's, he's been pragmatic like they've gone into this with guns and robbing the place right, that's what's going to happen he's yeah. sort of like we're bad guys we want to do the bad guy thing you can't go into it like him with like morals and like feelings mm. do you see what I mean but- I think he's going in f- purely for money. He's not there to just to kill people for the sake of killing people. No, but like I said, if you're going in there with the intention of hurting someone, if they're getting your way, what do you think's going to happen? Plus, oh, you missed that. There was a hard end in there. Oh. I don't know what Mr. White's doing trying to fight Blonde, though. Because Blonde is like 15, 20 years younger than him. And, a, you know, a good half a foot taller. Yeah. I don't think it would go too well for him. Well, they're all bad guys. <laughs> That's a very good point. He's really I think he's a singer from back in the day. I'm not sure. 
<laughs> Our ignorance is shown here. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> the diamonds? I reckon he's got. Oh, is he got someone tied up? Yeah, probably. It won't be the police because the film's going to end too soon. <laughs> no. I don't know. And then the rest, like the final hour, is just Quentin Tarantino with a troll face. A nice spot. So he's phoned this guy. I'm not sure. Or the guy in the tracksuit. Possibly. Is it body? Yeah. Body or hostage. Oh no, it's this guy. Oh, it's a police officer. Wait, no, isn't that the tra tracksuit guy? No, no, he was in a Mr. Okay, so we're now going to find out the background of Mr. Bond. Yeah. So it's going to show them all getting sort of recruited. Yeah. Oh, so that'll be his name, Vic Vega, then. Vic. He'll be Mr. Blonde now. He could have gone for any colour, why blonde? I don't know. So you've got, what, six primary colours? No, there's only three. Well, you've got your red, blue... Uh, and yellow. yellow. Those are your three primaries. You, they mix green. It. No, Orange. blue and yellow gives you green. I thought there were six primaries. No, there's three primaries. Hmm. And then they make all the other colours. Okay. Purple comes from blue and red. Green comes from. Oh, and yellow and red gives you orange. Yeah, and yellow and blue's green. Yeah. Yeah. So red and blue must be purple. purple. Yeah. Cool. Can you tell I'm not an art teacher? <laughs> I'll tell you not an artist. <laughs> uh, I can barely do a stick figure. So who comes up with the names then? This point, I really. think it's him in charge gives them all code names so they don't know each other. That's the guy who was in the. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he is nice guy Eddie then. But what's his name in this? Mr. Blue. No, I think it is still nice guy Eddie. Oh, it's his son. No. It's the big bald guy's son. Maybe he was just saying daddy out of the thing, you know? Oh, yeah, maybe like he's his. Yeah. All right. He's the daddy of all of them. No. Oh, no, son. he's actually son. So he's really making him uncomfortable. Yeah. So now what? Are they having a proper fight or a play fight? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, I think it's a proper fight. Neither of these two know how to fight. Yeah, it's a bit clumsy and awkward. I think it was more of a play fight. Though. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. They're both clearly more used to just using guns. 
Yeah. They don't really come across as pros either. No. They just come across as a bunch of amateurs. Or do you reckon that guy put it together in order for it all to mess up? Yeah, but how is he going to benefit from it unless someone actually brings him the diamonds? But maybe he thinks they're too amateur and too problematic. See, again with the hard end. Mm. Tarantino's got a habit of that. Although, no. It, it makes mm. sense in Django. Oh, yeah, it really makes sense it in Django. It doesn't make any sense here. I think it just shows what type of people they are, more than anything. I think it's just part of the culture at that time. Yeah. Long time ago now. What, 92? Yeah. It was my entire life. It was your entire life. See, he's on parole, so he's literally one bunny hop away from going straight back to jail. Who is? Him. Oh, right. uh, Mr. Blonde. Oh, okay. One bunny hop. Uh, it's a nice way of describing it, I think. <laughs> uh, so he's got to make sure he's always in yeah. check. Yeah, oh, she's just going to yeah, fiddle yeah, with yeah. the paperwork. Obviously. I love paperwork being fiddled with. <laughs> right. I see what you mean about the drawn out dialogue there. Because literally he'd, he'd explained exactly what was going on. Yeah. And then he continued. Yeah, you don't need that. In fairness, that one dragged on a bit. That a little bit. Like that, you know the explanation in, in Django where the dentist explains his job? Mm -hmm. Right, that's concise and gets the point. It just tells us the yeah, thing. Yeah, it's fine. Here's the thing. Cool. Let's move on. There's a bit long rambling speeches and just yeah. scenes set here and there. Because like, the thing is, this is a dialogue movie. Like, full stop, it's a dialogue movie. It really yeah. is. Uh, I think we've clearly understood here that is not your thing. <laughs> it depends. Like, you know Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy? Never seen it. Ah, Talk about Philistine here. Oh, stop you. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else that I've seen. It's actually culturally, culturally inclined. I can't really think of any other dialogue movies. No. Dialogue movies need to have a point. This is supposed to be like a, uh, a thief, a robbery, gangster type movie. So there yeah. should be more action to it. Yeah, they've sort of very intentionally cut the action out of it and relied on telling us what happened. Which brings me to the question of why did this become so famous? They clearly liked the style of it. and Because Tarantino does have a unique style and this was his first one. Mm. So if it was something different to what everyone else was used to, I can see it resonating. Mm. More, more good words. Your vocabulary is fantastic. Oh, yes. Really loving it. I, as we said before, I should be an English teacher. Mm -hmm. This is Ray Liotta. It has to be. It's the same uh, narrator for Goodfellas. Oh, right. I've, again, not seen Goodfellas. Oh, come on! Sorry. Oh, come on. This is turning into a joke now. Let me Google the narrator from Reservoir Dogs. If, it may not be him, but it sounds very mm. familiar. See, here's a bit more. They're going to work on the cop here. Is he an actual cop? Or is he... Yeah, he's a genuine policeman. They didn't know that until now? 
Or they didn't know that, but they thought that he was working for them. No, this is a policeman he's dragged back from the job. So he captured the policeman. So he's still uh, in blue with badge and uh, everything. And they're going to beat him up to find out who the informant oh, is. Oh, but he's not the cop. I'm getting confused there. He's not the rat. But they think he'll know who the rat is. So this nice guy, Eddie, in a tracksuit, is going to find his way in. Oh no, it's not, it's not Ray Mills, it's Stephen Wright. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is either. Stephen Wright. The comedian. There we go. What's that? Oh, look at his voice. Yeah, it's just one of his voices, I guess. Thing is, they shouldn't be punching him in the face too much because it makes a brain go all fuzzy. Yeah. Surely they should be working the body. You tell him. You tell him. Yeah. I'll tell them back in the year I was born. <laughs> you keep saying that. But... Yeah. Sounds like a Vietnam thing. Yeah, yeah you weren't there, were there. <laughs> you weren't there, man. Okay, so the dye you know dye what? orange. I could see orange being the one who set them up and revealing it right at the end. Oh. Interesting. Because the only thing they've really had to vouch for him was the whole he took a bullet for me thing. Yeah, that could have been a total accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really has taken him under his wing a bit, isn't he? Brown's dead. I think that's Tarantino. Possibly. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> See, that's very informative. And no one can say he's wrong. <laughs> His trousers are very tight. Mm. And a very baggy tracksuit top as well. Yeah. It's a weird combo. First things last. <laughs> you know, considering he's meant to be the idiot, he's actually the one who's pretty clued up. Yeah. Why is his trousers so tight? He doesn't have the figure for her either, so it looks just a bit dumb. Mm. He's not letting it go. No. Well, to be fair, if he started shooting randomly, he'd mm. cause all this. <laughs> it's like school kids. Yeah, I know. Like, he's done this, he's done that. <laughs> oh, okay, that's right then. He's just like, they touched the alarm, so they died. <laughs> I 
In fairness, he's quite chill for a madman. <laughs> yes, he's dead, that's what he's saying. I guess you just drag some random cop on it here. Yeah. Who's in a sorry state now? I don't see him over the setup. He's a random cop. Yeah. As if he's going to be privy to who an informant is. Yeah. They're trusting uh, Mr. Blunt with these two? I don't think they've got much choice. He's going to lay into the cop now. Yeah, possibly. He's taking his jacket off, preparing yeah. for a uh, severe beating, I suspect. Yeah, I think he's going to go to town on him. He is messed up, that guy. Like, he's clearly a madman. That's what the other guy was saying. I don't believe him. <laughs> what? Red zone is like red, double red, red lights for us. Yeah, or double yellow. No, we have no single red also exists. Oh, do we? Yeah, no, oh, no. yes, of course we do. Yeah, he wouldn't know. <laughs> At least he's quite charismatic. Yes, that's what you hope in the potential torturer. <laughs> then he's charismatic. Oh, he just called him his boss. He won't like that. Ooh. He's so going to wail into him. Yeah. He's just drawing out. I think I'll just shoot him. No, he seems like the sort to like making them suffer. Mm. Huh? Oh, damn. Just for fun. Sure. This took a turn. Yeah. I think you might be getting towards that action scene that you were looking for. What the hell? He's just teasing him with the gun. Surely you'll just take the bullet. I think he's still hoping to get out of it alive, but mm. not sure that'll happen. Oh, he's wearing proper, like, Thigh high snake skin boots. Not thigh high, um, but oh, halfway up his calf. Yeah. Oh, I need some music for it. He's struggling. That's hard to throw he's still alive, to be honest. Yeah. I think you'll just sort of like hang on for the rest of the movie. Oh, it's stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> God, it makes it worse when you're sort of tortured yeah. by someone like that. Who's so happy go lucky with the whole thing? It's actually quite a good song. Yeah. I must feel good about it. 
Well, it always reminds me of Louise Redknapp singing it, which wasn't as good. What the hell is he doing? I think he's going to start carving things out of yeah. his face. Not like Tarantino to shy away from the goal. Yeah. Was I saying, watch your head? Yeah. Uh, now we're going to get to see the results, I think. The ear has come off, I reckon. Yeah, looks like it. Ouchie. The blade's surprisingly clean. Yeah, I was going to say that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> oh, he's really playing with him, isn't he? I think Mr. Bond's going to get a... Uh, a what? A rough death. Yeah, I can see him not making it. This is in the middle of town. Like... Yeah, it's not like a middle of a field somewhere. No. So when they were all screaming at each other, there's always a chance another yeah, house could over here. Now. Like, it makes sense why you put the tape over the guy's mouth, but. Mm. He's got something else in his boot that he's not told the others, I think. Sneaky. And how do you know? Ah. <gasps> uh... Well, he's going to set fire to it, but. Looks like it. How did no one else in the neighbourhood notice them drag? Like a guy out of the back of a boot into a shed. I don't know. I guess it's one of those things we'll just have to accept because we never saw it. True. Wait, he cut his ear off and now he's going to burn him. Looks like it. What? Or he's going to taunt him with it. Who knows? Who knows V? His trousers are quite tight as well. Mm. Again, baggy shirt. Yeah, baggy shirt. No, it's, the trousers are tight around the butt, not around his legs. No. Oh, that would sting right yeah, in his open wound. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Surely the other people are going to hit. Is it still on? No, it's not. Oh, it looks weird. No, his ear is on. It's, they've taped it down to make it look like... Oh, yeah. Well, obviously they didn't it, cut his it, ear off yeah, in real no, life. I know, but I'm just saying the effect looks a bit weird. I think this must have been really low budget. Also, why I think they've skipped on a lot of the action. Possibly. But that's no excuse. I don't think that's the point of this. I think he just wants to see you better. Yeah. Wait, but if this is a neighbourhood, shouldn't he... Well, you think they'd notice the smoke and the screaming? Yeah. In the middle of the neighbourhood. Nice. Oh. Nice. Good for him. Mr. Orange was here. Yeah. He could have done that earlier. That's what I was thinking. Literally waited until the last minute. What if he fell and the lighter fell on the. Yeah. Petrol? I guess the dramatic suspense worked. He's looking He's a looking bit perkier. Dead. How is he still alive? I don't know. Hmm. Should I say thanks? I think so. What, now they're going to have interruptions? Yeah, it looks like it. His name's Marvin. Lovely. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Nash. He's like, all oh, right, cool. Don't care. Oh, 
Oh, there oh. we go. Oh. There we go. So he did know something. In fairness, he did. And you were there. right, you called that. Yeah. God, he's bleeding so much. Oof. <laughs> you look like you're missing an ear. Yeah. Seems he's still probably not making out of this alive. Yeah. He's still tied up. So the others are going to come back and just be like, right, cool, still kill him. He's got a point. Yeah, he's got a point. They both got good points. <laughs> they must be waiting for someone big to come into the warehouse so they can get him. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a waiting game. Basically. So they're going to show how he got infiltrated by the police, I think. Or how he infiltrated them. You called it though. Yeah. I recognise him as well. Right, he's dressed like a teenager there. He's got the uh, douchebag curtains as well. Someone's spotting them from outside, oh. Oh, yeah. So this is his sort of contact, I think. The person he meets with and discusses all the details. What? Is it, so the, that's the police contact, yeah, I think. Okay. So he's trying to find, you know, like all the information, yeah. all of them. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't sound like Americans can go in there and have like a smoothie shake with their meal. It's I really know. American. Like, you don't really see that here. No, it's quite a fill-in drink, really. Yeah. The only, the only time I see it is like a burger place, like a Five Guys or a GBK. 
Yeah. Where people sometimes get smoothies or shakes. Yeah. With their burgers. Or but McDonald's. But they don't do proper shakes no, at McDonald's. No, these big thick ones, massive ones. It's mm. very much an American thing where they had the word a meal. So he's trying to fill in on all this stuff now. Hmm. Basically describing himself right now. Yeah. But that's why he gets a small part, I think. That's fair. Wait, why is he getting a script? He's got a pile of information to remember. So, like, if he has to take uh, tell anecdotes about an old job uh, he did, stuff yeah, like that, yeah. it just sort of like embellishes the backstory. Yeah, it makes it makes people believe in him. Although, does his police contact really have to be shirtless? Yeah. With a colourful bandana. They're not undercover right now. I said something's dressed like that. Yeah. See, again, the protracted dialogue just to say, you've got to know all the details. That's what I'm saying. This, this is exactly my point. You, you picked up, and now it's gone slowed right down again. We don't need all this. No. It's just unnecessary dialogue. But Part of it feels like filling a runtime. So I think what he's got is he's got a good idea. He's got a few key plot points and key scenes that he's certain on, but he needs to flesh it out with dialogue to make it... Well, that, that's well, still a surfer poster. Mm. And sometimes I think he can't stop himself either. He, he constantly thinks that if he does this, it just adds more artistry to it, but he doesn't. In some cases it does. some cases I really appreciate it. You see, if you've seen Pulp Fiction, there was a bit at the beginning of the burger conversation. That adds to the scene because of what happens next. But this doesn't... Don't tell me too much because I will no. catch that at some point. But, but this is too much. It's not actually leading up to anything. It's just leading up to the next scene. Mm. Isn't, you don't need this for that. I think it's just adding depth, we'll say. Or he should have cut out the, all the long talk at the beginning. Yeah, I in, think that was the, just to establish room. all the guys who were there. Because there were guys minutes. who were there who've just not made it back into the movie. Yeah, we should be getting onto those. Not faffing around with this nonsense. It's quite an extended piece of he's preparing to go yeah. undercover. Oh, what, the, what the hell do I need this for? It really does remind me of Nicholas Cage. Though. Really? Yeah. Uh, I guess I just don't see it too much. It's more than what was the Brian Gosling he said? Yeah. No, no, you're way off with that. I'm not saying he's perfect match for Nicholas Cage, but it's way more close to Nicholas Cage than this too. Uh, Brian Gosling. I think it's the small boyish part. Yeah, but the nose and the, and the, and the lower face and his persona mm. doesn't match. But he's got a Backstreet Boys haircut. Yeah, douchebag presents. This, is, this, this haircut tells you that yeah. he sleeps with yeah. a random stranger and then goes back to his mom's house. So this is where he's fleshing out his backstory for them, getting ingr ingratiated. There's one pointless scene after another here. Yeah, there's just sort of really going into the whole undercover cop thing. That's weird. 
What other Sunday nights were Bart Simpson kicking? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's really setting the scene here. It's almost like, you know, in a stage play where everywhere, every other character pauses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just got one spot in line. And he monologues. Huh. So basically, the police ignored him. That's That's the story. There we go. I don't think a police can really say that. He <laughs> just yeah. threatened to shoot people in the face. This is back in. You know, this film was made in the nineties. Is this set yeah. in the nineties? Is it? I think so. I think it's just set at the time it came out. Why is he going to the sink to wash his hands and walk past the police dog again? Wants to act as normal as possible. But a lot of guys go to the bathroom without washing their hands. True, sir. is weird. Yeah. It's a bit drawn out. Oh, now they're all staring at him again. Like, how dare you interrupt our story? It's a rubbish story, anyway. Yeah, it is. I'm bored of this story. You get bored so easily, though. <laughs> so he's just talking about how great the guy they're trying to arrest is. <laughs> That's a good way to describe that. But yeah, the thing is the one you think of. So Showtime must be where they're getting told about the job sort of thing. Well, when they go to the restaurant or...? I don't think the restaurant, because he's not dressed in his suit. Oh, yeah, sure. What happened to the good old leather jacket? No one wears it anymore. No, I wouldn't mind a leather jacket. The problem is it's hard to match a leather jacket with things. Jeans and a t-shirt is essentially the only thing you can do. Mm. But also, I don't like baggy leather jackets like these guys will wear. Yeah. A good fitted one, maybe. Yeah, a baggy leather jacket. Because then it looks like, you yeah. know. No, a baggy leather jacket makes you look like an angry teenager who's taking a gun into a school. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, like a good, decent leather jacket. Yeah. Mm. No, I agree. You like it? Yeah, go for it. I'd be kind of bomber jackets, though. Well, not bomber jackets. If I could get a leather bomber jacket, I would get that. Why is he playing with his penny jar? Oh, wedding ring. Does he need that for the past? For his I don't know. I don't remember. It seems very specific. Yeah. Oh, what now? He can stare at himself in the mirror. Yeah, needs to give himself a good talking to. He got hurt. Yeah, he got hurt. He definitely got hurt.
Are they really going to sit right behind them? That's what I'm thinking. Come on. Like, they couldn't make it any more obvious, really, could they? What the hell's the song is this? It's Can't Stop This Feeling. Is it? Yeah. Oh. It's um, mostly well known for being in Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Again with a hard R, uh, hard N. <laughs> Oh, they've got a fetish for black girls then. So they they felt bad so. about killing the black girl in the bank or whatever. Oh, and now yeah. they're banging on about it now. Black I girls. don't know. They just keep focusing on it and no. I'm not sure why. No. Well, Quentin Tarantino has a thing for black girls and he's coming through in his dialogue. I think he's got a thing for feet is the thing he's famously got a thing for. Well, feet? Feet. He's got a foot fetish. Yeah. Really? Allegedly, yeah. he gets actresses to come to his hotel rooms so yeah. that he can suck their toes. <laughs> That's allegedly. Oh, Quentin. I would not state that as fact, but allegedly that is I a rumour. I'll Google this. This is, this is quite a new writer. That's allegedly. I will emphasise that a lot. Is this going to come allegedly. out in like court documents at some point? I'm not sure it's going to be some major Weinstein. Well, no, because if it's all consensual, it's different. But Quentin Tarantino foot fetish. Foot obsession. Uh, foot in mouth. Uh, this kind of Google's giving me stuff. Uh, yeah, all his films has close-ups of feet and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a few articles here. Something. Oh yeah, in Inglorious Bastards as well. I remember that. Mm. There wasn't one in Pulp Fiction, was there? I don't know. Maybe there was. I one think one it's there. the dancing scene where they're dancing. It focuses on the oh, feet. Oh yes, Pulp Fiction. you may be right. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, he does. And apparently, come, come, uh, it's shown in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is the latest one. That's what they're all talking yeah. about. Whoa. Quentin, you little saucy minx. Yeah. Uh, I guess everyone has their thing, don't they? Maybe we should try it out and see how it goes. <laughs> what do you mean by try it out? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure where you're going with this. Neither do I. I have no idea what I'm doing. No. I'm just following Quentin's uh, lead here. Oh, so bad. Yeah, it's more of that sort of like unnecessary dialogue at this point, isn't it? Yeah, that's it? what I'm saying. There's too much of it. It's only when you really notice it, there's a lot of things which don't tie in with what's important in the movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's why it feels pointless and, and longing out, because it doesn't tie into the movie. No. Nor does it add any drama. So he's not been in it, that blue. old guy. He must be blue. He's white. He's orange. Yeah. Uh, Buscreen is pink. So that's blonde. Yeah. Pink. But then Tarantino is brown. Yeah. Although I've not seen Tarantino here yet. They should be. He's basically saying just be serious until the job's done. This is a weird one off thing. The secrecy is the most important thing. That works well for him. Yeah. 
Oh, there he is. Because <laughs> <laughs> they'd argue about them. He's got a good point though. Yeah. Hundred percent everyone wants to be Mr. Black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's very true. He's just saying, look, you take the name you're given, and that's it. <laughs> Rumble it. This is very different to anything else I've seen Steve Buscemi do. I want to say that. I've not seen him do anything else like this. Where he's uh, acted like this. No, but it's not that far off the other stuff he's done. Sort of similar sort of area. Hmm. Right, so they've planned the whole thing. So they've basically raided a, raided a diamond shop. Corners, wholesale... Diamonds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. As a man of experience, yeah. a pro. Uh -huh. yeah, fair enough. Well, he's going to do all of that within two minutes. Well, he, no, he's just giving various scenarios yeah. what he would do. Pop, pop, pop. Oh, that's them in the real thing. What, after this happened? Yeah. Oh, what an idiot. So they've had to ditch the car. They skipped over what went wrong, though. Yeah. Well, they basically said that the cops were ready and prepared for them. Yeah. Damn. Double pistol. So he though. killed some yeah, police officers. Killed... There we go. Wow. Damn. This, isn't this guy that got upset about the other guy getting mental? Yeah, but... He went mentally in the shop. Yeah. Why did he die? Well, he'd been shot, I think. That's where he had blood pouring down. So we'll see this guy get shot at some point. Yeah. The question is, did he actually take a bullet for the other guy? I don't know. Might have been completely accidental. Mm. Why would you just put your foot down and, and... Oh, she's getting her gun out. 
That's how he got shot. Yeah. <gasps> and he killed her. I did not see that coming. No, she should have put her foot down. So that's how that happens. Well, wow. shocking, actually. Yeah. The one thing Quentin's actually good at is showing crazy things happening out of other situations. Mm. These are the repercussions of what ha happens. Yeah. That's quite good, actually. I can't believe he shot the woman. Yeah, no, same here. I didn't think he would do that. No. Back to the present. Yeah. So we've just got to sort of see how this all ties up, really. So they're all back from their little trip. He's telling me he's going to burn him alive. Just gonna shoot him. I don't think that Eddie believes. Although I think Eddie quite liked Blonde. Yeah. Yeah, he's closed in on him now. Yeah. I think surprise gunshots coming. Oh, big man's there. A lot of blood. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, but easy. So Blue died. I think we guessed that. Blue had no part. I don't think he even spoke. No, I don't think he said a word. <laughs> oh, Whoa. we got ourselves a standoff here.
I, if I was pink, I'd keep my mouth shut. I'd be yeah, one to walk away with everything. Exactly. Wait, where are the cops going to turn up when the big bald guy turns Yeah, up? so they should be here any second. Oh, there we go. Wait, wait, who shot him? I don't know. Unless that was pink. Wait, what? Who shot this guy? I think it was pink. He's hiding under the thing. With a gun in his hand. Oh, so, yeah. Smart. So basically, they all died, essentially. Yeah, apart from Steve Buscemi. Hey, Who got off Scott pink. Free. The gay guy. Oh, I called him gay or something. So Mr. Pink is going to take the bag. It's going yeah. to run. Oh, a ledge. Makes sense. Police Makes outside. Makes absolute sense. Police not outside. No, doesn't look like it. Oh, oh. Mr. Pink. Wow. So this is what Tarantino does. He gets you really in depth yeah. with the characters and then kills them all at the end. It's the only way forward, to be honest. I'm glad we're standing there. Going for it. I hope Mr. White makes it to the life. No, I think he's I think he's in his dying breaths here. So he was lying about the police coming. I don't know. Oh, really? he's gonna hug him. Do you reckon he's gonna confess to being a cop? Oh, I don't know. Oh, there are the police. Surely they'd be here sooner if they were watching the house to make sure when the other guy turns up. He should be dead by now. Oh, there we go. <laughs> sort of right on cue. Are oh, they shooting what's coming? I don't know, maybe. Because I heard gunshots. Oh, I admitted it at the end. He's going to shoot him. Oh, damn. He's going to shoot him. He's so going to kill him for that. No, he's not that sort of person. I think he will. Oh, maybe. Oh, you break my heart. Oh, you may be right. Yeah. Why would he tell him? Yeah, no, it wouldn't tell him at the moment. I guess he figures he's dying anyway. He's going to shoot himself through the hand. Possibly. I think that's the least of his worries. Oh, police are in. He's going to shoot. There we go. Yeah. So they so all they died. Were dead, yeah, but it's going to be dead outside, I reckon. Yeah, probably. Well, that Ooh. was Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, it was Reservoir Dogs. So. Interesting. The ending was alright. I middle, like the start. Middle, I like the ending. I like the middle to end. <sighs> I think in just, for the same reasons why I disliked um, Hateful Eight, the... He filled it with dialogue. It was way too much. You could have easily cut that down. Could have. Or at least made it action-packed. One of the two. If you're going to have it that long, and yeah. cut something and make it action-packed. Or just cut it down. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I enjoyed it mid middle, middle to the end. It was a good film. Yeah. I wouldn't watch it again, though. You would? Or I wouldn't. 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 No, I think we've got the gist of it now. Yeah, I would not watch that again. And I don't think it's as good as people make it out. Pulp Fiction, I think, I was is, the better, is the better cult I was classic. definitely expecting more from it. From him. Uh, see, that's the problem sometimes when something's bigged up before you see it. You it doesn't in... live up to that hype. Yeah. 
And I think that's what we've just gone through here. And like you said, it might be a product of his time. Where yeah. Because if we at think that now, time, it was, it, was, it was interesting and different. It was a quarter of a century and ago. And the twists and turns was what caught people. Yeah, it was different to what I think people were used to at the time. Also, back then, people were more up for longer films where things got dragged out a bit. Although that it. wasn't as long as a lot of Tarantino. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. It's just that I've sort He's of... He's become a lot more indulgent with himself recently. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, right. I think we we'll probably best leave it. Yeah, um, what's our rating, rating time? Yeah, rating time. Um, okay, I'll give it, uh, da, 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 17 undercover cops out of <laughs> 48. 17 out of 48. Uh, that's, that's about really, right. That's quite low, actually. That's really low. 17 out of 41. Yeah? 17 uh, undercover cops out of 41. Yeah, you know what? I'll go with that. I think it's... I will agree. I think it's a one-time watch. You want to watch it again? Yeah. It's decent. Could have been better. Could have been worse. I think yeah. we had some dead moments in the middle. I think we went in this with too high an expectation. I think yeah. that's what happened. I think we were also possibly a bit tired. Yes. And uh, <laughs> Quentin boring the crap out of us with his dialogue. Out of you. More than me. <laughs> I'm a bit more accepting and tolerant. <laughs> possibly, yes. But yes. Right, right. Cool. That does us for another movie commentary. We'll um, catch you on the flip side. Please remember to like. <laughs> Subscribe, leave a comment what you thought of it. You might have had a completely different opinion to Absolutely. us. Uh, let us but know we any don't other care. films. Oh, no, we do. We do, right. we do. Calm, we do. You, calm yourself down. Right at the end, you've turned into <laughs> this. Right. Uh, let us know what you thought of the movie if you've got different opinions to us. Uh, let us know any other movies you think we should be commenting on, watching. Just let us know. Right. Join us again sometime soon. See you later. See ya. Bye.